Final score from Oakland. Three. Ladies and gentlemen, this is McGuire's Restaurant and Comedy Club. We've been here for 17 years, and tonight is the first time that we've done a roast of this nature, but it's appropriate that we do it for Vince D'Antona. <laughs> He's been playing here since we've been doing comedy 17 years ago. He still plays here all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, now that Rick Morgan's out of business, he plays here twice as much. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Rick Morgan is my friend. Uh, 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 John, you're drunk again. Friend, 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 friend. He's my friend, my old friend, Rick Morgan. Welcome to McGuire's, Rick. <laughs> Changed over the years, haven't it? Okay, uh, who am I introducing here? You? Peter Bales, ladies and gentlemen, the roast master for the evening. Here he is. Thank you, thank you. Come on, give a hand, John Grimes for the owner of McGuire. Let him hear it. He didn't do too much damage there, that was good. All right. This is the roast for Vince D'Antona. Yeah, kill the music. We're gonna, we're gonna kill the music and bring up our guest of honor. Most of you know him, he's one of the top acts around and uh, there isn't anyone who has a bad word for this guy except maybe his audiences. <laughs> but he's our guest of honor and we're gonna bring him up and uh, he's gonna be sitting here the whole time. We need one more chair. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a warm round of applause for our guest of honor, Vince D'Antona. And George, come on, give me a hand. Come on, This is the man that we're honoring. There he is. Come on, give me a hand. Standing in Vincent. We love you. Vince's friends in the... <laughs> Vince is going to take a short break. <laughs> Very short. <laughs> All right, stop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a long night. we got time. <laughs> and uh, we're all going to say a few words about Vince, whom we definitely admire. And, uh, and George, in fact, uh, if you. anyone was wondering whether or not George was going to be here tonight, George goes everywhere with Vince, just so that Vince will not be the smallest guy in the room. <laughs> Vince has been doing comedy here on Long Island for so long that when he started, Rick Morgan was speaking with a Dutch accent. <laughs> Rick Morgan is now roasting Otto and George across the street at the Holiday Inn. And of course, Otto has not shown up. <laughs> Vince has been doing comedy for so long that one time John Trusom came up to him after a show and said, nice set, give me a call. <laughs> Vince and I lived through the 80s, an irresponsible, hard partying time we can now barely remember unless we look at Joe Starr. <laughs> Vince has been interested in ventriloquism ever since he was a young man and he realized how much he enjoyed fist fucking. <laughs> Get used to it, folks. Get used to it. <laughs> no question. That's the level of the crowd. <laughs> Even today in his neighborhood, the children all call Vince the puppet man, and they've never even seen George. <laughs> Vince's, lo 
lovely wife, Maureen, says that in the bedroom, Vince can make his penis talk. <laughs> Unfortunately, all it ever says is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Vince always has good judgment. Up at Caesars Cohaven in the Poconos, he said, Hey, I know I'm three hours from home. I know I'm tired. I know the weather is bad. Now give me a couple of shots of vodka and I'll be on my way. <laughs> Vince drinks so much that when he works the casinos in Atlantic City, he tries to get drink tickets for himself and George. <laughs> Vince drinks so much. <laughs> Vince drinks so much. Nothing. <laughs> Vince drinks so much that one night Joe Starr actually said to him, I've had enough, I'm going home. <laughs> a lot of you know that Vince is a proud Vietnam veteran. In fact, one time his unit captured a Viet Cong gorilla who wouldn't talk until they forced him to watch Vince's act. <laughs> Apparently the word ting ho in Vietnamese means hack. <laughs> At Stand Up University, we wanted to offer a course on ventriloquism, and we asked Vince to teach it, but he said, are you kidding? Forget it. That type of comedy is total bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> I'm moving. <laughs> One time, Vince met his idol, Sherry Lewis. He hit on her, but nothing happened. Though George did get a blowjob from, from Lamb Chop. <laughs> Later that night, Vince had to use his own sock. <laughs> You can see from tonight's roast that strong bonds of friendship develop here on Long Island among the comedians. In New York City, it's different. Some comedians in New York City have been so desperate for stage time, they're willing to offer to the MC sexual favor. Here on Long Island, that has happened to me only once, and it was Chris Montroni. <laughs> I wasn't sure Paul Byron was going to be here tonight. Thank goodness he is. There he is. Yeah, what are you? <laughs> I was worried Paul wasn't going to be here because Paul had sent me an email that said, I should be there unless at the last minute I have to lick Jim Brewer's ball sack. <laughs> that was a jealous prick right there. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Starr is here tonight. We all know him as a pretty humble guy. After he signed with Rory Rose Garden, out at the bar, he said to me, "East, my career is going somewhere." Tonight, he said, "Are you buying?" <laughs> well, in all seriousness, Vince, I, I want to pay tribute to you. And there are a couple of people who are uh, out of town who couldn't be here, but I have emails I'm going to read and present to you. Um, first from a buddy of yours, uh, a great comic on Long Island who's moved out to California, Jim Myers. He uh, misses you, wishes he could be here, but he sent an email I'd like to read, okay? Okay, would you do that? Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, this is from Jim Myers, a uh, uh, successful comedian and actor out in California. What can you say about Vince D'Antona that hasn't already been said by the rarely employed and always unattractive group of no ne'er-do-wells who have shown up to take cheap shots at him at a club that almost never has worked for them. <laughs> What's more, who of you here tonight, whether you be on the dais or seated in the audience, can honestly say with a straight face that you give a flying fuck one way or the other? <laughs> Vince D'Antona is a little man who plays with dolls. <laughs> End of story. Is he gay? Ladies and gentlemen, what difference does it make if he is? What self-respecting homosexual would give this man a second look? <laughs> if the truth must be known, it was George who decided to take pity and let Vince join the act. It was George who makes the calls, and more often than not, it's George who gets the directions, pays for the gas, and does the driving. Vince drinks and pretends he hasn't heard the jokes before. 
I'm going to keep this short and to the point. In truth, Vince D'Antona is an old and beloved friend of mine. Of the people I know, he, write, he rates very high on the list of those I respect. Vince is a former United States Marine. He was decorated and fought in Vietnam. After serving, he chose to go back and serve again. These are things I know only because I was able to get Vince to talk about them. He almost never does. I love you, Vince, and I hope life continues to be good to you. Jim Myers. Thank you, Jim. Jim Myers. All right, now this is from your buddy, the King of Queens, Kevin James. Okay. <laughs> Where is he? Who's supposed to be here? <laughs> it says, this is from Kevin and uh, Richie Minermini. Okay. Um, it's an honor for us to roast a guy like Vince D'Antoni. And what a great idea it was to hold the roast on a Sunday night when everyone was available, unlike on a Friday and Saturday when everyone was working. Delivering mail, driving cabs, checking water meters in Massapequa. <laughs> At least now Dabrowski has a reason to be in someone's backyard peeking in their window. <laughs> I don't know this guy, he's a pervert comic. <laughs> and what better place to hold it than McGuire's Comedy Club? Lucky break that it was available on a Sunday night. <laughs> And what a great idea John Ryerson had to move the stage and reconstruct the club. That really brought the people in. Hey, John, here's a tip. How about moving the fucking club out of Bohemia and closer to people? <laughs> Kevin James said that. I <laughs> We all know that stand-up can be tough, and it's only getting tougher now that the comedy boom is over. Thank you, Ed Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you should always have something to fall back on. I can't stress, en stress enough the importance of education. I know my show won't go on forever. That's why I've applied and hope to be accepted from one of the most prestigious institutions in the country, Stand-Up University, <laughs> under the fine tutelage of Peter Bales. <laughs> but anyway, tonight is about Vince. And by the way, Vince, I don't know what you're drinking, but your last name is Dantona, not Daytona. Stay off the fucking highway. <laughs> we love you, man. Take care of yourself. Signed, Kevin James and Richard Miller Thank you, Kevin and Richard. Well, you're a great crowd. You ready to uh, start the cavalcade of insults and friends who are going to come up for Vince? Well, first, let me introduce one of the guys who was instrumental in uh, organizing this roast. And uh, he's, he's one of the best comics around. And, uh, no, no, it's not you. Dick. Serious. His name... It's Chris Monty. Come on, give me a hand. Chris Monty, let him hear it. Who was the same as Peter Bales, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Bales. Thank you, Peter. Peter Bales, a man whose talent has exceeded our expectations, but his career hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we are here tonight honoring Vince D'Antona and George, ladies and gentlemen. And Thank for those you. of you, oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who Vince and George are, you're not alone. <laughs> There's a whole world out there. I don't want to stand up here and be little Vince and George and say that they're nobodies in show business. I wouldn't do that. I would like to say a big compliment to them that they are the biggest nobodies in show business. <laughs> And Vince is responsible for a lot of people coming out here tonight, and that is wonderful, but it kind of sucks, because 30 years in show business, he's still doing bringer shows. <laughs> Vince, I'm very happy to be here. I know Vince Antona very well, and I was going to get you a, a wonderful gift, but uh, how do you wrap a saloon? <laughs> yes, Vince likes to drink. Vince has been drinking since he's a child. His parents never knew he drank until one day his mother saw him sucking on a popsicle with an olive in it. <laughs> and we all know that Vince recently was in a car accident where he was 
He fell asleep behind the wheel, driving home from a show. Apparently, he was listening to a tape of Steve Lazarus. <laughs> Look at this, Deus. Look at this. How pathetic is this? We have Mr. Paul Bond here. Very good friend of mine, Paul Bond. Don't feel bad there, Vince. Here's another guy that, in order to be funny, has to carry wood. <laughs> Rich Walker, good friend of mine. Rich Walker on the dais. I love Rich Walker. Rich and his lovely wife, Christine, are going to have a baby soon. I'm very happy for them. Thank God she's pregnant. She's been wearing me out. <laughs> Well, but since the accident, I don't want to say the times have been really bad between Vince and George, but I just found out that George sent a videotape and headshot to Jeff Dunham. <laughs> I'm glad Vince came out okay. I'm glad everything went well for him, because if we would have lost Vince, I tell you, a lot of people would have suffered. Firstly, McGuire's would have lost their weekly headliner. <laughs> If Vince wasn't here, Eddie Murphy could never have used him in any of his movies. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot. He didn't move, use you in any of his movies, did he? <laughs> but I think the people who would have suffered most if Vince wasn't here is the people at Stoli Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is nice. Vince's career began 30 years ago when he started in the service, performing for all the troops. That's true. He was paid $5 a night. $10 when he didn't show up. <laughs> Vince is a veteran of the United States Marines, and that is unbelievable. That is great. He was hurt during his time in the service. He wasn't, not in a war or anything. He fell off a bar stool. <laughs> <laughs> and as I, I like to say this, this is amazing, that all the money that's collected at the door tonight is going to be donated to Vince and George, and it is a record for the most money ever paid to an act at McGuire's. <laughs> but don't get too excited because John has to take out two dollars for insurance. <laughs> Vince, I gotta say, I've watched you perform for many years, and I say this to you from the bottom of my heart. It's over. <laughs> Put the dummy in a suitcase, call a cab, you're drunk, and go to fuck home. It's over. <laughs> Vince D'Antona is a mentor to me. He's a great comedy person to be around. And most of all, he is my friend. And I love him so much. And I hope that he has another 30 years in show business. God bless you, Vince D'Antona and George. Vince Montoni, come on, give me a hand. Thank you, Chris. Chris Montoni. See, that was nice. <laughs> no more cursing. <laughs> Okay. I think I said fist fucking up front. <laughs> All right. We have another comedian coming up here who's a good friend of yours. Another comedian, Vince, who's venturing into an area he's never gone before. Please welcome to the stage. Rich Walker and Roger. Come on, a big hand for him. Rich Walker and Roger. I got a fucking puppet. That's it. Yeah, haha. <laughs> and you're a dead man. Uh, you know, well, first of all, I want everyone to know by trade, if you don't know me, I am not a ventriloquist. You're an insurance adjuster. <laughs> by day, I'm an insurance adjuster. By night, I'm a very, very funny comedian, I might add. You might add it, nobody else will. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> it's yours after tonight. All right. Hey, you know what? We were going to have this roast for you tonight at Westbury Music Fair, but they wouldn't let us rent two sixteenth of a room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this night isn't about me and you. This is about Vince D'Antona and George and all their friends that came from... Look, think about this. Rick Morgan came all the way out from Long Island. <laughs> yeah, and he weathered uh, John Ryerson. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, Rick, don't say that. Rick's now a comedian now, saving money on an MC. No, he's a, no, he's a very good comedian. As a matter of fact, like most comedians, when he first started, he was a complete zero. Now he's a thousand times that. Think about it or get on the way home. All right. Hey, you know, I tried to get Eddie Murphy here tonight for you. Yeah, Rich waited on a street corner in Hempstead all night, dressed like a transvestite. No takers. Hey, I said this night is about Vince D'Antona. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you see, if anybody saw your act, Vince, they'd get that. Hey, you know, uh, recently, uh, by the way, you know, as Chris mentioned earlier, we almost lost Vince in a terrible uh, accident, but thank God he is here tonight to enjoy this wonderful night. Am I right? Yeah, and thank God for the inflation of his, uh, of his, uh, his airbag. No, his liver. <laughs> You know, tonight we're going to mix an exotic drink for Vince, something he's never had before. No alcohol. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hey, you know what? No, tonight marks an anniversary. Yeah, it does. I know the anniversary. This is the anniversary that Vince did. I know, I sucked it with this puppet. I, I'm talking and the puppet's not. And I know. It took me like, now I know how hard it is, Vince. Who are you going to give up? Pete Michaels? Yeah. Hey, he's here tonight. Shh. All right. I hope he brought Sonny and Cher to get a laugh. Uh, uh, that's bad. It's a roast. It's a roast. <laughs> no, tonight marks the tonight marks the. It was him supposed to say that. Tonight, tonight marks the anniversary in 1981. Uh, oh, I know that night. That was the night Vince D'Antonio won America's Funniest People Grand Prize winner. Yeah. No, it was the night he was sober. <laughs> hey, you know what? We would have been better if Vince, we didn't buy that book from Vince, How to Be a Ventriloquist. <laughs> All right, we'll skip that one. <laughs> you know, you have to be really well liked to be roasted. Yeah, but we couldn't find anybody, so we picked Vince. <laughs> All right, they suck. Uh, you know, it's true. Like Chris said, that Vince played for the troops. You know, one night, both sides were there. The Confederates and the Yankees. <laughs> hey, how come you got the same voice as Otto and George as George and Vince D'Antona and George as George? Same voice. I have to have this voice. Why? It's the hack dummy voice. <laughs> All right. You know, Vince always idolized some of the... All right. Vince idolized some of the greatest ventriloquists of all time. Uh, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCar P McCarthy, Paul Winchell, and uh, Jerry Mahoney, right? And he, uh, Dick Cheney and George W. Bush. <laughs> See, I got him on a political joke. I knew it. All right. Hey, you know, I never forget the first words Vince said when he first started doing comedy. He used to say, so where are my Roman friends? <laughs> Hey, get those fucking lions out of here. <laughs> hey, you know what? I just figured out. What'd you figure out? I'm the dummy Vince would have had if he decided to update his act. <laughs> hey, get out of here. Nice. Yeah, no. All right. Give it up for Roger. Making his first and last debut in comedy. I like Roger. It was really nice. I just want to say uh, we're really happy to know that Paul Bond is here. He's probably one of the bigger names right here tonight. Would you say that? Good friend of mine. He would. Yes, he would. He doesn't have an ego. There's no. Yes, he does have an ego. No, he doesn't. Shut up, down there. Big ego. No, but I saw I saw Paul pushing this night. He was pushing it. He was putting up signs everywhere to get everybody here for Vince's roast. As a matter of fact, I even saw him at Wallbaums putting up this one. <laughs> Shooting over there. You know what's scary? His own family loves that. CDs available. All right. All right, one last thing before I go. <laughs> Thank God his, his family is here. Vince's family is here, thank God, because they brought back one of his old pictures that he had when he was taken when he was 10 years old, and I got it here tonight. 
Before the act started, it's a big piece of wood for anyone that doesn't know. But then at age 32, at age 32, Vince uh, grew up and the act developed right there. Are we looking at the same picture? All right, well, that's my Tom Rich Walker. Vince, we love you. God bless. Congratulations. You can have these to keep Paul wants his. Oh, thank you. Rich Walker, come on, give me a hand. Rich Walker. That was so much better than his regular act. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, you got to fix that. All right, no problem. We got more. We have more. We're going to bring up right now a guy that you saw before, but he... Uh, He's the owner of the club, and he has some, some heartfelt words to say about Vince. Please welcome again John Ryerson. Come on, give him a big hand. John Ryerson! <laughs> Must be roast, though, not hanging him. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna put that back up there. Hello, Vince. How are you? Hello, George. Hey, how you doing, John? We haven't seen you since uh, what? Yesterday? I think so. Friday, I Thursday, know. and Wednesday. See, I knew, I knew somebody thought you'd say something nice about this. <laughs> That's all, no, I, actually, I'm going to say a lot of things nice about Vince. Go ahead. I know he's been playing, I, I said this before, he's been at this club since I opened it, since, uh, since we started comedy. Can't get and, any good uh, work. When, when, <laughs> when, when the great Rick Morgan came in and started booking my club. <laughs> Rick, it's nice to have you back at McGuire's, okay? I understand you're running comedy next door in the uh, deli, but uh, 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 it's not going to work because... Uh, uh, I, I think the, uh, the, the king of the, uh, the deli comedy is out in the bar there, Harry Friedman. Except you gotta be kosher to get in. <laughs> Harry, you in the house? A lot of your friends are here tonight, Vince, but uh, they, they're all gonna roast you, but I'm not gonna roast you as badly as they are. I'm gonna tell you something. Thank you for being at McGuire's all these years. Well, thank you for having me. You're all the best. And if you are my only headliner, Every Friday and Saturday night, we'd still be selling out. Thank you. That's really all I have to say, ladies and gentlemen. He's my buddy. The rest of the guys can kill him. John Ryerson, come on, give him a big hand. John Ryerson, let him hear it. John Ryerson. You hear that, guys? That's how you talk. <laughs> Just say nice things. That's what you want, huh? Just say nice things. All right. <laughs> Just say nice things. Our next guy, well, you all know. And he's a pretty fragile ego. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Even the audience knows. No, but it's a truly a great friend, a great comic. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome Paul Bond. Big hand. Paul Bond. Paul Bond. George, amazing, right? Let's have a nice hand for them. I, I, listen, uh, I, I know it's a roast and people are supposed to make fun of them, but uh, I, Vince and I go way back and I, I can't really do that. I have a lot of love for Vince. I want you to know that. Know that right now that Paul Bond loves Vince D'Antona and George. But there is somebody who really has a different opinion. I'd like to bring him up right now. You know what's going on? <laughs> they tongue kissing? <laughs> Hi, I'm George from the future. <laughs> Forty years in the future, and I got some bad news. Vince has passed away. Oh, it's sad. Oh, yeah, oh. He died in the outback eating a blooming onion. It took 40 years? 40 years. Uh, let me check that. No, he didn't die from eating a blooming onion. He died in an outhouse because his liver was the size of a blooming onion. <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about the your pedophile here. <laughs> This guy, I 
attended every open bar to wind up in an open casket. He left me penniless. Prick. If he didn't have his head up his ass as much as he had his hand up mine, we might have a career. Why couldn't I be Jeff Dunham's puppet? Even Otto and George got on Howard Stern, you fuck. What did you get on, News 12? whoop de doo Peter Bell wiped his ass with News 12. I'm the only puppet that was jealous of Christopher Reeve. At least he could walk away. Hey, you fucking roll away from an asshole like this. Put up my own fucking joke. Eat me. Dressing me in bowling shoes. Fuck you, sir. If I want shit from you, I'll squeeze your whole fucking body, not just your head. Dressing me in bowling shoes. What kind of fucking statement is that? Bowling shoes. By the way, Vince, in the future, I learned how to walk and I learned how to bowl. <laughs> That's right, the only difference between my bowling ball and Vince D'Antona is when my ball winds up in the gutter, at least he's not face down in his own puke. <laughs> I don't want to say drink, Vince drinks a lot, but for Christ's sake, the CEO of Jack Daniels and Smirnoff showed up at his fucking funeral, and they were the ones trying the hardest. <laughs> But I was a nice puppet, I gave him a proper burial, and I got even. I shoved my hand up his ass, I broke his spine, folded him in half, and put him in a suitcase. Fuck him! <laughs> See how that feels, sucking your own dick for eternity. <laughs> Driving into a tree, what the fuck is wrong with you? I got a crash test dummy, asshole! By the way, the cruise control only operates the foot pedal, not the fucking steering wheel. <laughs> but I'd like to end on a nice note. <laughs> in, honor, in honor of Vince, when he passed away in the future, NASCAR heard about it and they... Well, they named the race after him called the Vince D'Antona 500. That's when you get in your car, get fucking smashed, and go into a tree, you cocksucker. Good night. show business. I'd like to do that, but there isn't one here. So. <laughs> now, this guy is big in comedy from coast to coast, from uh, Rocky Point to Patchogue. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's his good friend and one of the top comedy bookers, Rick Morgan. Come on, give Rick Morgan a big hand. Come on. Holy shit. Sorry guys, I just want you guys to know that if you ever hang out with Vince, the three of you have such a good time. <laughs> He's one of the funniest people off stage everything else. One time, I saw him staring at me below my belt, and I, I started to feel very uncomfortable. And uh, he looked at me with a smile, he goes, I have phone envy. You know, so he has a twisted sense of humor. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with this guy. You know, 20 odd years ago, we used to go out and really party heavy. Look what the fuck happened to us. <laughs> God bless you, man. Both of you. Thanks, Rick. Rick Morgan, come on, give me a hand on him here. I think somebody gave you the link. <laughs> He's a, he's, a, he's a big agent, he's a big manager, he's a big, he doesn't have setups and punchlines. <laughs> Who's Rick Morgan? Oh, look at the guy who's coming up next, a good friend of yours. Who's that? Where? Where is he? Right over here. Where? Where? Right to my right. Where? What guy? Right there. Beer here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, top comedian and also beer vendor at MGC. <laughs> Steve Lazarus, come on, give me a hand. Come on, Steve Lazarus. 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's great to be, I can't believe this place is sold out. Obviously they thought this roast was for Otto and George. <laughs> Let me apologize for that smell while uh, Paul Brown was up here. Um, it was actually Jim Brewer's asshole. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rick Morgan is here. That was great. Rick Morgan, as we know, is the comedy what Garth Brooks is the comedy. <laughs> I, the last gig I did for Rick Morgan was in Firehouse about a year ago, and he said, Steve, I'm very sorry. I can only give you $25. I didn't get the turnout I expected. It was only 475 people. <laughs> Joe Starr is here. I love Joe Starr's philosophy on comedy. If it worked for Red Skelton, it'll work for me. <laughs> Peaches Rodriguez is here. Uh, I said to Peaches, um, how do I get some stage time? She said, do what I do, just fuck Peter Bales. <laughs> that obviously is not working. Uh, <laughs> Oh, God. But seriously, a lot of people uh, wanted to do the roast tonight and they couldn't be here. Kevin James, Klaus Myers, Ray Romano. They couldn't make it because uh, they made it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everybody was in agreement that obviously uh, Peter Bale should be the MC, uh, except France. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Chris Monty was here. He looked good tonight. Chris Monty. As we know, has been working every single weekend. Thank God for Jokey Karaoke. <laughs> Rich Walker did a great job. How about a hand for Rich doing the puppet? That was real hard, Rich Walker. Uh, his wife is pregnant now, and uh, we discussed it, and he said, maybe I will get her pregnant, just out of spite. <laughs> just so she, become, she could become Mrs. Fucked by an Asshole. Guys, thank you very much, Vince. I love you. Thank you. You had to know where Rich was at to get that joke. That's just, uh, that actually wasn't uh, good. Okay, good. Thank you, Steve. Oh, another top comic. I haven't seen this guy's great. Who's here now? Take a look. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Anthony. Come on, give him a big hand. Yeah, he's terrific. Thank you, Vince. I just want to say that I'm, I'm drunk. And that's only so that you can understand me. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's breaking his balls tonight. Every, all right, you fucking alcoholic, you do. Everybody's teasing Vince, but nobody thanks him. Vince has given me a lot of referrals and a lot of gigs. And I just want to tell him tonight that I'm going to pay you back every last penny of that $250. Bastard. <laughs> With all the drugs and all the alcohol that you have consumed, it's amazing that George doesn't have his hand up your ass. <laughs> teaching you how to speak, you fucking drunk. A lot of you who are or drive. A lot of you are non-comedians here tonight going, what's all the inside jokes about? Who's that guy? Who's this guy? I have to let you know, it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> they're not going fucking anywhere. <laughs> Vince D'Antona, I remember you when you had hair, you bald fuck. <laughs> and tonight you put on your best throw-up jacket. <laughs> You look like a fucking homo. <laughs> if you didn't have the puppet, I'd fuck you. <laughs> but I know he gets jealous. <laughs> so I won't. <laughs> this man is very funny, very talented, and they're beautiful people, him and his family. Congratulate him for 30 years of fucking up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Anthony, come on, give me a hand. Joseph Anthony. Well, here's a guy coming to the stage right now. You've heard him a few times tonight. One of the finest comedians around. And, uh, 
He's at home here. Please welcome Joe Starr. Joe Starr, come on. Joe Starr. Okay. Good to see you. Welcome everybody to tonight where we're not only roasting Vince and, and George, we like to call this the uh, I Won't Blow John Trusen So I Don't Work Governor's Show. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw Vince and George was at Chuckles. It was at Chuckles almost 20 years ago. I remember I laughed so hard I almost forgot to hit record. <laughs> They've been around a long time, you know, when Alan King started, most of Long Island was farmland. When Vince started, this was, from here east, was all underwater, all of it. <laughs> but Vince, Vince is important to stand-up comedy. He's brought something back to stand-up that was almost lost through the years. Plagiarism. <laughs> I'm not saying that Vince isn't original, that he doesn't write his own jokes. I don't need to, just watch. <laughs> I'm just saying that some comics use a pen, some use a computer, and he uses a bookmark. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Not a bad, because Vince is a really nice guy. George, however, is a prick. This kid, I don't like him. Many times, four in the morning, I've been woken up with a phone call, you know, and I pick it up, and hello, and all I hear is, E-I-E-I-O, you cock. <laughs> I know it's him. How'd you know that was me? <laughs> I just guessed. I got Paula ID. <laughs> but Vince, Vince is a sweetheart. You know, Vince really is a sweetheart. All the comedians do really, really love him, do respect him. The way he stayed behind in the pack that he started with. <laughs> no move to L.A., you know, no parts in motion pictures, you know. Instead, he decided to stay here on Long Island. They keep all the young comics from having to take shit gigs for $50, 400 miles away. <laughs> he took every one of those fucking things in the last decade. The humanity. I mean, look, Awake in Patterson, you know, a comic book convention in Hartford. Whatever it was, an afternooner at the Falling Cock Retirement Home. Whatever it was. He took it. As long as Morgan books it, he's going to show up. That's all it is. Rick Morgan was up here before, you know, and he, he is a book. He's the only guy I know with a solar-powered accent. The only guy. <laughs> the later in the day you talk to Rick, the thicker his Irish accent is. You know, what I mean? eight in the morning he sounds like Tim Hami, and by five in the afternoon he thinks he's fucking Braveheart. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Take a note, Rick. Look around. You can book a club that's on street level. <laughs> <laughs> You see, Mr. Morgan books a lot of stuff in basements. Shy of Mrs. Chang's House of the Unusual, he's the most popular guy in Bangkok. But watching all the people that came up here so far, you know, on the dais tonight, I've seen so many, you know, old friends of other people. Paul Bond was up here. Paul Bond and I go back well over a decade, so does his material. But it was from Paul that I learned, never be late for a gig. That was a rule, never be late for a gig. And, and, and he lives by that rule, he's never late. The problem is he doesn't know when to fucking leave. That's the problem. <laughs> Getting Paul, to Paul Bond off on time? Sure, yeah, that's like me ca catching me saying something Adam Ferrara didn't write. <laughs> and Ed Ryan's gonna be up here late. You haven't seen Ed, a great guitar player. Paul's a guitar player, Ed Ryan, a great guitar player. Who has a habit of breaking strings because he plays so hard. Because that's what he thinks. I just, I happen to know the strings are committing suicide. That's what I know. <laughs> Steve Lazarus was up here before. Steve Lazarus. He, he, Lazarus. That's the perfect last name for a guy who keeps trying to resurrect dead material. <laughs> He's a stiff performer, man. He really is. He's the kind of comic a mannequin catches on a night out. <laughs> He's the only one here who's naturally stiffer than George. The only one tonight. Tony Landolfi, another new comic's gonna come up here later. I like Tony Landolfi. He's one of the newer comedians. You'll see him up here later. I think he's gonna go far in the business, you know? The way he gets on the stage and doesn't let all that quiet throw him. <laughs> the audiences like to see him. They're low-key. They don't gotta work hard. Why laugh? Why have a good time? Just sit, watch, and go home. <laughs> Just like Chris. And Chris Monty was up here before. I love Chris Monty. He was the first guy who was up. I love Chris Monty, you know what I mean? He's a good guy. He was part of a team. He was part of a comedy team, Monty and Lund, until he came to his senses and said, I don't need somebody else to suck. 
Oh. Chris Monty is the comedy with an over by this to a blowjob. <laughs> it's annoying, but you put up with it. <laughs> And just a footnote, Ron Tobin's here tonight, but nobody cares. And Billy Norton will be up later. Billy Norton, one of Vince's closest friends. I, I love Billy. Billy, do me a favor. Clear your fucking throat, would you please? He's got a voice like this. What do you do, gargle with broken glass? And I've noticed there's no women here tonight. There's none. There's no women on the dais. No women are coming up to insult and have a good time with Vince and George. None. That makes me the only person who's ever heard, show us your tits on stage. I'm the only one. <laughs> but apart from all that, you know, apart from that, seriously, you know, Vince was, Vince and George were the first headliners I ever did get to work with many years ago. And since then, I've done nothing but learn from these gentlemen, both of them. I had a good time with them, and I hope they had a great time here tonight. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Vince and George. Joe Star, come on, give a big hand. Joe Star. Oh. Oh, this is a this is a real treat. Hey, how you doing, man? This next gentleman. Rock Rubin. Oh, this next gentleman is a fine uh, stand-up comedian in his own right. Uh, a Long Island native who has gone out to California to become the head writer for the television show King of Queens, and he's in town, and he's here for Vince. All right, a big hand for Rock Rubin. Come on, give a hand, Rock Rubin. Okay, now things are looking up. <laughs> I, uh, I did, I did fly in uh, for this special occasion. Uh, did I have a bat mitzvah to go to this weekend okay. also? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have missed this, Vince. Uh, I don't know how long you've been doing comedy. I know how I, I've been doing it for 14 years. And you were doing it for a few years before that. <laughs> how many years is it? Do you know? Um, Do you remember? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's been About a while. 30. <laughs> About 30 years. That That is an incredible feat right there. 30 years of stand-up comedy. And, and, and what a nice feather in your cap this evening is being roasted here at McGuire's by a room full of middle acts. I don't think you could punctuate a career any better than that. I, uh, I, I will be quick. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. I was writing Kevin James, Jim Myers, and Richie Minervini's jokes earlier. <laughs> I didn't have time left for myself. I'll be quick. I do have to get over to the Daldini roast. <laughs> That's easier because you don't have to say much. It's all silent roasting. <laughs> the new Daldini, that would be slightly fun. Mildly amusing. They're not easy for Vince to be a, a, a ventriloquist. Uh, generally, you are supposed to be larger than the puppet. <laughs> In Vince's case, he refused to let that handicap slow him down. And it's that kind of drive and stick to and dedication that has made this man my, one of my idols in comedy. He, he, he stands his ground. Like a lot of comedians feel the need to update their material, write new things. Vince is steadfast against change. He will close with ABC. At his 50th reunion, I'm sure. And that's all right. Let's see, what do we have here? Yeah. I was going to say something about Rick Morgan's British accent, but I'm not. It's been covered. <laughs> oh, I, I, see, I didn't know about the car accident. I've been out of town. I haven't, I haven't gotten the Vince newsletter. As a negative. <laughs> so I didn't know about that, but I remember this is not, if this was a tragedy or, or a bump in the road, certainly for you. I remember uh, years ago there was another bump with your, uh, with your coke seizure. I'm oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Heart attack. Heart attack. Heart attack. This is heart attack. Remember it? This had a heart attack years ago. Heart. 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 Oh, not, a, not a coke seizure. Not a coke. Heart attack. <laughs> but uh, I was yeah. worried. I was worried about at that time. It was a it was a pretty tough time that you went through. You guys both yeah. went through, and we didn't know if we would ever get to see the old you again. That, and, I, and that made me sad. 
And I had the privilege of, of being on the first show that these guys did after Vince's heart attack. <laughs> and uh, I remember that night because I, I, we asked Vince, I was with Gary Valentine, we asked him how he was doing and how he was feeling. He said he's, he's feeling much better and thank you for the, for the concern and to all the comedians for their concern. And he said, as long as I take my heart medication, I'll be all right. He had about a handful of pills, which he washed down with a flask of scotch that he had in his breast pocket. And I knew then that he was all right. That he was all right. But I don't have much to say other than that. I think that would be followed by the end. Thank you for having me, Vince. I'm sorry I didn't have more time to prepare, but uh, it is a pleasure to be here. And thank you very much. Rock Rubin! Rock Rubin! Rock Rubin! Who is this fucking guy? Give me one of the things. Okay, rehab, rehab, you gotta go. Rehab. Absolutely. Vince, you're responsible for this. You're responsible. Oh, wait till you see the next comedian. What can I say about this guy? Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. Well, sort of. <laughs> Harry Freeman. Come on, give him a hand. Harry hey, Freeman. Dr. Freeman. Hey, doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to see Peter. I first met Peter 20 years ago when he was emceeing on a Monday night at the comic strip. And, uh, 20 years later, he's emceeing tonight at McGuire, so I think his career is going in the right direction. <laughs> I also want to thank you, Peter, for using up most of my act when you used the word fist-fucking, so I had to rewrite this whole thing. <laughs> we are here today for one very important reason, to find out who Vince D'Antona really is. I've known Vince for a long time, and despite that fact, I don't know him all that well. I've never gone out drinking with him, for example, but uh, I think we can see the results of what happens when he does and have to have his head re-strung like a bad fucking tennis racket. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the only comic that's getting sympathy for him. <laughs> the fact is, when we talk about Vince, we have to talk about George, one of the most brilliant gut-level, funny, innovative puppets in the entire business. Thank you. Actually, I'm sorry, I was talking about Otto's George. But I think Vince paid tribute to the, his idol by giving his own more mediocre dummy the same name. So I think I speak for the entire comedy community when I say Vince changed the fucking name. And I say this because Vince is so deeply jealous of Otto, he began actually copying Otto's act. Not in terms of stealing material directly, but if you know how Otto pulled the back of his head of George back to reveal what happened when JFK, when he first got shot, I think it's obvious Vince was trying to do the same thing to himself. <laughs> I delivered that badly, and now a cell phone is ringing. Thank you, I feel like I'm on Thursday night at McGuire's. Please don't get me wrong, I don't think we should sell Vince's George's short because let's be honest, George is the brains of the operation, so I'm not here to roast Vince as much as I am to ask the question of why George hasn't moved on. <laughs> there are plenty of other people who could stick a hand up your ass and come up with much wittier ad libs than Vince, so to me, George is a sad, pathetic dummy waiting for a new brain, and Vince recently almost fulfilled that wish. <laughs> And you gotta understand something, I really like Vince, he's one of the nicest guys in the business, and personally, I don't wanna roast somebody I really like. To be honest, I'd rather tell you what a cocksucker some of the other people in this business are. <laughs> His name shall go unmentioned, but let's say, for example, one rhymes with gazpacho, <laughs> and another rhymes with loosen, but that's... <laughs> loosen. <laughs> that brings me to the question, though, of how did Vince and George come to be? The story begins in Vietnam. As a soldier in Vietnam, as many of you may know, Vince had the dirtiest job you could possibly have, which is to, of course, uh, shoot innocent uh, civilians. <laughs> or as George likes to call them, gooks. <laughs> uh, of course, that's Otto's George. Uh, Vince's George called them by the more f civilized term, uh, fucking gooks. <laughs> there was more to Vince's job in Vietnam than just killing gooks. He was a tunnel rat, which is a bad combination of fear factor and survivor, which means when Vince's fellow soldiers were risking their lives fighting, Vince would find the nearest hole, crawl into it, and hide until the battle was over. 
which unfortunately caused a little bit of a scene during the USO performance by young Richard Gere, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> the truth is, Vince's job was so dangerous, each time he went into a new cave, he'd be completely terrified he was going to die, even, even picturing how he was going to get it. In other words, he pretty much felt the same way Rich Walker does every time he goes on stage. The question I have is how did Vince face going down one tunnel, let alone 18, knowing the odds of surviving each time are about the same as getting a booking from Roger Paul on one phone call? For one thing, he'd open with a joke. Two Jews walk into a bar. That works no matter where you are. The ironic thing is, Vince never worked a tunnel, though, with more than three people, so to this day, He's so nervous about a big crowd, he has a clause in his contract, he doesn't have to go up if there's more than three people in his audience. So I, for one, am scared he might fly off the handle tonight. Sometimes Vince would go a little further, he'd follow up his opening with, so how are you fooks tonight? Which of course, Otto then stole to become the more successful act. Nevertheless, Vince became good at getting the enemy's attention 25 years later. Some of the VC were actually quoted on the History Channel as saying his act was stock, but he did some really good crowd work. <laughs> Hold on while I nervously turn the page. <laughs> oh, there's at least ten. The smartest thing Vince did, though, was create an alter ego by imagining to self to be in somebody else's body, which explains how he became a ventriloquist. Now, it doesn't explain why he became gay at the same time, but it does explain the ventriloquism. So I say, Vince, if you were brave enough to go down those tunnels, why are you still so afraid to come out of the closet? <laughs> During the war, Vince went down 18 tunnels, 57 hookers, 55 male, one female, and one transsexual. <laughs> there was plenty of variety as to what went into his mouth, and it was also his own personal version of the crying game. <laughs> In his platoon, he was known for going down anytime, anywhere, on anyone. When they came to a tunnel's reputation, it spread to the enemy who was so afraid they'd run out the back door, which Vince also liked, but that's again a story for another time. The fact is, it was so scary, Vince created George, and he learned he could confuse the VC by sending George into the tunnel first. And since there were 18 tunnels and 19 Georges, I think if you do the math, you'll realize this is the only George left that doesn't have a poisonous spike in his head. <laughs> and this is the 11th Vince. So these Georges gave up their lives to save seven Vinces, and Vince recently used his eighth life in the car crash. It's amazing anybody can get out of bed. <laughs> Unfortunately, the scars remain. So Vince now walks around with a fake smile on his face to hide the darkness and a large bottle of booze in the glove compartment to make the darkness more interesting. And every night after the show, he turns George into a distillery by shoving grapes through his mouth and drinking the wood grain alcohol that comes out of his ass. <laughs> All right, I'm on the last page. Yay. Yay. Yeah, I wrote this shit. I'm not doing it at home again in the bathroom. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, you fat bastard. I speak, for, I speak for both Georges when I say that. All right, nice. All right, don't heckle me, I got in trouble once. There are times George protests the fact that Vince turns him into a distillery, at which point Vince threatens to drop him off on the way back from the Poconos at Hal Caverns with some Asian tourists to finish off the job. <laughs> to this day, Vince still refuses to eat Vietnamese food. Please understand, he still pays 50 bucks to fuck their women. And 100 bucks for some of their men. <laughs> and 200 bucks for their one transsexual, but he won't touch their food, other than the two favorites he can't live without, come fuck my duck and come chew me. <laughs> and by the way, if any of this material is a little raw, please understand I actually got it from Otto, so. The fact is though, I think it's weird that there's two Georges, because that, that Otto's George is the one that makes the most jokes about chinks, despite the fact Vince is the one who actually risked his life with chinks, so. Apparently, test results are in. Drugs are more effective at making the mind go over the edge than combat and alcohol. And if you don't like that joke, I don't care, because for once in my life, I just wanted to say the word chicks. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks for Harry Freeman, come on, give a hand. And as always, that was Harry Freeman, and as always, it's time to regroup. But you know, <laughs> I'm the comics know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Vince, you know what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs>
All right, coming to the stage right now. It's just, it's just one heavy hitter after the other. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Ryan. Come on, give him a hand. Ed Ryan. That's a tough act to follow, I'll tell you that. Hope you're awake. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased and honored to be here tonight to pay tribute to our friend Chips Cooney. <laughs> oh, shit, now you're the fucking puppet guy, aren't you? All right. Well, that's the last time I get information from Roger Paul. What are you gonna do? All right. Now, Vince D'Antona. Vince is a man who has kept me entertained for years by moving his lips. <laughs> a man whose recent car accident kept him in bed for two weeks, nearly bringing to financial ruin the Absolute Vodka Corporation. A man who, like myself, has been accused of being a prop act because he uses a puppet and I use a guitar. And I'm here to set the record straight, ladies and gentlemen. He will agree with me. It is not a prop. It is a crutch. <laughs> But why are we honoring this man tonight when there are so many others here entertaining us who have never had a puppet? <laughs> never had a puppet, ladies and gentlemen. For instance, Peter Bales. Oh, don't turn me down. I'll stop yelling. <laughs> Peter Bales, a man who not only educates in the schoolroom, but also instructs in the comedy classes, proving the old adage, those who can't, peach. <laughs> never had a puppet. Rich Walker, a man who, when I first met him, I was working for MC Money, and he wasn't yet in the business, and it's nice to know that some things haven't changed. <laughs> Rich Walker, a man, if not for Steve Lazarus, wouldn't have a tail. <laughs> Never had a puppet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Billy Norton, Billy Norton. The only man who actually envies Jack Klugman's voice. <laughs> Never had a puppet. <laughs> Joe Starr. Joe Starr, a man who's up Joe Starr, a man whose obsession with the rat pack has become an obsession with the six pack. <laughs> and whose six pack has become a keg. <laughs> Joe Starr, a man who eats raw potatoes because he can't wait for them to turn into vodka. <laughs> Joe Starr, a man who can suck the juices out of a Jersey peach like it's nobody's business. <laughs> Never had a puppet. Never. Tim Hamayoun, a.k.a. the Iranian Evan Weiss. Yes, Tim Hamayoun, whose name is often funnier than his act, never had a puppet. Ray Grins, who couldn't be here tonight, but who once saw a guy with no arms and said, at least I can juggle better than him. Yes, Ray Grins, whose head is actually so big, people often mistake him for John Trusen. Oh. Never had a puppet. That was funny. <laughs> Adam Ferrara, who couldn't be here tonight, but a man whose Olive Garden commercials created a new word in our culture, hospitala homo. <laughs> Never had a puppet. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Bond, a man who for years ran Airsick Productions with Billy Hine, a.k.a. Fat Guy, a.k.a. Billy Staples, a.k.a. Gun. Yes, Paul Bond. Paul, can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear with Brewer's Dick in his ear. Paul, can you hear me? Paul Bond, a man who hired me week after week to sing his non-regional Airsick songs, to which I would always reply, yeah, I'll sing it, but it's not funny. <laughs> yes, Paul Bond, a man who made parodies, dramas, never had a puppet. <laughs> Steve, La Steve Lazarus. <laughs> Jackie Martling. <laughs> Jackie Martling, a man who once said to Howard Stern, what are you going to do, replace me? <laughs> Never had a puppet. <laughs> and Chris Monty, last of all. Chris Monty, a man whose talents 
have yet to be seen. <laughs> Chris Monty, one half of the comedy team Monty and Lund, who went to Richard M. Dixon for advice and were told, you can make it. You, maybe. <laughs> Yes, Chris Monty, Monty and Lund, who did not break up because they weren't funny. They broke up because they weren't funny and they didn't have a puppet like this. <laughs> hey, all serious now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here. It's my first roast. Vince, I just want to tell you, in all the years that I've known you, you've been nothing but a gentleman and a pleasure to work with, and God bless you. Thank you. Come on, give me a hand, everyone, in here. He never had a puppet. How long is this thing? Maureen, start the car. That's right. Yeah, you're going to piss this lady off. All right. Oh, they keep coming. Pete Michaels, come on, give me a hand. Let me hear. Michaels. Hey, Pete. Who has a puppet? He's got a puppet. Moving on up. <laughs> to the east side. Hey, look, they spread the lights. Oh, Shut up, you. Yeah, shut up, you little crack of motherfucker. All right, stop. <laughs> Only Negro in the whole motherfucking club got to be made out of wood. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Do you know where we are? I don't know. Where the fuck are we? Where is Patrick We're, we're at McGuire's. Baby? We're at McGuire's. Yeah, if you're the only one fucking with you, wouldn't be here again in this goddamn shit. <laughs> Who are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about our friend Vince. And Jay. yeah, how you doing? Vince is a little, 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 little ball head motherfucker. What's going on there? Hey, George, how you doing, you little cocksucker? How you doing, Sitting up there with your dirty fingernails in the boy's ass and shit. Y'all don't know what this shit feels like. I'm going to tell you right now, this ain't no fucking picnic. Standing with your head, talking about a hand in your goddamn ass. And the right hand, the shit rub off and shit. Good motherfucker. But it's nice to see all y'all here. In, in, where we at? Long Island. Yeah, look at like a goddamn clam rally and shit. What the? They got one Puerto Rican whole joint, Peaches. That's about it. That's all. And nine with black ass out there. How you doing, Pete? How you doing? Good. Stop standing on that dick, you pervert. Fuck. <laughs> And we're here to talk about our good friend Vince D'Antonio. Yeah, Liz D'Antonio, a ventriloquist. <laughs> Look, Vince, this is how it's done. You understand? This is how it's done. The lips, the lips ain't supposed to fucking move. You understand, Vince? You sick, bald-haired motherfucker. <laughs> now, what about your buddy George? Now, you've known George. Oh, yeah, I remember George when he's a little fucking sapling. I remember that little motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, George. Dogs used to piss on his ass, too. <laughs> Lift that leg up, and George is sitting there going, Stop it! <laughs> George, do me a favor. Blink. Blink one fucking time. Do this, George. Blink, you motherfucker. <laughs> he can't blink. I know, because this cheap cocksucker didn't put the shit in yet. That's right. 30 years with your ass is still here, sitting there like a deer in a fucking headlight. Like <laughs> Remember the night that George's string broke? Yeah, that was a fucking blessing. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we actually had to put a coat hanger. Oh, yeah, you put a coat hanger up George's ass and hooked yeah. it around his jaw and made the shit work. That's true. Yeah, it's a true story. I ain't making this shit up. You gonna make this shit up? Ain't this is a fucking illusion I got going up here? That's I still right, got George. scars. You still got scars, you <laughs> sick motherfucker. You liked it too, didn't you, bitch? <laughs> Something to you. Now, I've been, a, I've been a partner for a ventriloquist for a good amount of years. And I'm going to tell you something. This shit ain't easy. Every night sitting in a goddamn suitcase, you can't even jerk off your hand, hit the fucking lid and shit like that. that. She went in on oil, your big old titties hang on, hanging out. You can't do a goddamn thing. See, I started taking Viagra. <laughs> now my wife calls me the tripod. 
Oh. You girl like that? You ain't seen your dick in 10 years, chubby. Motherfucker <laughs> gotta go to Anpro to double A. Uh, uh, there's my dick. Oh. Shut the fuck up, you Michelin man looking motherfucker. <laughs> You know what makes me laugh? This stupid cocksucker arguing with a piece of lumber. That's what makes me laugh. Who the fuck is work? Who the fuck is work in your head? Wait, I wanna ask you one shut up, mother. I wanna ask you one question. What the fuck is it with you guys that put his hands on somebody's head? Do you all dress them in fucked up looking colors and shit? I know Tintin ain't easy, but what the fuck are y'all thinking when you get in the goddamn Look at you. You look like Don Ho puked on his ass. And you look like you fell through a fucking awning. That's one of Vince's jokes that he stole. And Billy Norton, nice to see you there, Billy Norton. You and Julian Dean are going to set my ass on fire tonight. I know you, motherfucker. Now listen, we don't have much time to get up. Oh, sure, sure. Put down the black man. Sure. I'm the only one this motherfucker. I'm gonna make a phone call. I'll shop and be here tomorrow. <laughs> and then John Rice gonna sell the joint back to Rick Morgan. Right. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of Rick Morgan, I remember Vince D'Antoni had some rough time. He had a rough You don't know, y'all don't know he had a rough career point. At one time he was so desperate, he wanted to have King Thor to buy out his contract for Rick Morgan. That's how fucked up that shit was. <laughs> only the comics know what the hell I'm talking about. All right. Listen, we just want to end this really quick, okay? Yeah, I just want to see a couple of things. First of all, from my man, George. George, look over here, you little concept. Look over there. <laughs> hey, no, brother. Yeah, bro, I got your brother swinging right here, my brother. Man. <laughs> and no, this ain't a leg. It's a dick with a shoe on the end. You know? <laughs> and you can't touch this. All right, all right. <laughs> now, listen to me, my man, George. Now, you've been with, you've been with uh, Otto Vince. Yeah, whatever. You've been with Vince. I love what it, 30 years now, 30 years, saw his ass holding count of rings. How the fuck old are you, man? 30 years with the same guy, hand in your ass. Now, did he once wear a rubber glove? That's all I want to know. No, he don't wear no goddamn rubber. Don't even wash his fingernails and shit. And, then, and the night he got into his accident, who got fucked up? George got fucked up. George got fucked up. George got busted up hands, busted up midsection, lost dick, done snapped in half and shit. I was driving. Yeah, I know you were driving, goddammit. The state trooper pulled him over and said, is the little, like, little guy okay? George said, I think so. <laughs> Can I talk to this one? Yeah, knock your goddamn Italian selves out. All right. <laughs> I just want to say, as a fellow ventriloquist, and there aren't that many of us, but thank God there ain't enough of you already in this goddamn business and shit. Yeah, yeah, you'll be on a fucking Leno show. Yeah, yeah. 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 You'll be on the Leno show when fucking this motherfucker get on the Leno show. <laughs> but anyway, no, as, as a fellow ventriloquist, I've watched Vince, uh, I've watched Vince's career through the many years, and we got to be very good friends, and uh, and it's a pleasure. I don't get to work with him that often because we both do the same thing. Yeah, except he does the shit, like, yeah. five days a week. We, we do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. 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 George, okay. give me some, George. Give me some right here, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Got your ass in the motherfucker. But I did want to say it's a pleasure to watch Vince work whenever I have the chance, and uh, I'm so glad that he made it through that thing that he went through. What, the heart attack? No, no, no. Yeah, that too. But uh, went through the accident, uh, and he's a great friend. He's a wonderful ventriloquist, and he gives uh, he gives my craft a good name. Vince, God bless you. Thank I love you, buddy. coming to the stage right now. Oh, we're on. <laughs> Johnny Russo, come on, give a big hand. Hey. He got dressed up. <laughs> Low budget. Okay, you know, I wanted to say that, uh, I've known Vince for about 10 years, and uh, like most performers, uh, Vince has probably made uh, uh, thousands of acquaintances and professional people he knows in the business, and 
and I'm sure that Vince on the on the fingers of his hand can count his true friends. And uh, I like to think that uh, <laughs> I like to think that <laughs> with some probability I, I can count myself as one of Vince's close friends. And uh, it's important. <laughs> it's important because queers need friends. <laughs> Now, this was, really, this was important with these tendencies. They, uh, as you know, uh, some people can experience these tendencies from a traumatic experience in their life. And uh, such is the case with Vince. Uh, I knew Vince about uh, 15 years ago when we were doing the Poconos, one of his better rooms. <laughs> and he was young, and the top of his head was covered with curly black hair. He was uh, going down on Lisa Lampanelli at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, wait a minute, I like girls! Right. <laughs> this is true. As a matter of fact, Vince, uh, Vince's, uh, Vince's talents go beyond Vince Wilkerson. Vince is uh, a creative mind. He has a, he's an expansive mind. He reads a lot of porn. And uh, if you notice that John Peasy couldn't be here tonight, another Vince Wilkerson, I invited John to come along, but uh, John cut the uh, brake line in his car. <laughs> If you notice that uh, John's not here and Vince is here, they're, they're actually, they're very close. They're both Italian, they're both middle-aged, they're both balding. They are, in fact, believe it or not, they are brothers. More than brothers, they are Siamese twins. More than Siamese twins, they weren't joined at the hip. They were joined at the cock. <laughs> And Dr. Levy, a noted neurologist, and doctor, uh, well, he had to do the uh, divvy up of the cock. It wasn't a normal cock. It was like 17 and 3 quarter eighths inches long. It was an odd number. And the, the quandary was who to make the bigger prick. And our hero has reigned victorious. It's here for Vince Antonio, my friend, Vince Antonio. Clearly smoking pot, a part of his rose Are we preparation. Done? Is that it? <laughs> I'm telling you, that cock separation thing came out of some drug trip he took. Hey, no excuse. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard a lot about this guy coming up here tonight. Now you're about to see him in person. He's absolutely great. Billy Norton. Come on, give me a hand, Billy Norton! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, now you'll hear some nice stuff about us. <laughs> Billy's our friend. You'll hear some nice stuff now. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> See, that's the nice thing. <laughs> We're here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We're here tonight to honor not just a great entertainer, but a friend, a father, a husband, a husband, a husband. <laughs> That's it, just three. <laughs> I probably know Vince a lot longer than a lot of people here. I remember when I was fucking his first wife. <laughs> yeah, Johnny was a lot of fun. That was the second. <laughs> that's, that's right. Johnny was Vince's second wife. Vince's first wife couldn't fuck anybody. <laughs> that's why he ended up with Johnny. <laughs> Johnny would fuck the puppet. <laughs> In fact, Vince likes to brag how the big comedians today, when they started out, they would open for Vince and he would give him a ride to the show. <laughs> Little did he know they were getting a second ride from Johnny. <laughs> big names too. Kevin James, Eddie Murphy, Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
to truly understand Vince, you have to start at the beginning. Vince wrote his first joke at six years old. It was, hey, G.I. Joe, good to see you in men's clothes again. <laughs> Ironically, it was the last joke he wrote because soon he learned the word stock and a career was born. <laughs> After high school, Vince joined the Marines, where he was drilled by sergeants. <laughs> nah, and he was a drill sergeant. Pitcher, catcher, what's the difference? <laughs> he served distinguishedly in Vietnam, where he was awarded the Purple Heart, Yellow Moon, Marshmallows. <laughs> Vince had a little trouble after his tour of duty, leaving Saigon, when they found a small Vietnamese boy in his luggage. <laughs> Police! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> One question all the boy would say was, E-I, E-I. <laughs> Is he going out, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> Vince returned home and embarked on his incredible career. He was on such TV shows as America's Funniest People, Joe Franklin, and Dinosaur. <laughs> They were all extinct, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I always had fun whenever I appeared with Vince. And the best times came when we worked a year together at Caesar's Cove, Caesar's Cove Haven every Monday night. <laughs> I learned a lot during that year. I learned that Vince likes to record his act <laughs> and listen to it later on. It explains his incredible timing. It also explains why he tends to fall asleep on the way home. <laughs> we would alternate on the driving. One week he'd drive, I'd drive the Max, and then him again. It was like playing Russian roulette with the Hyundai. <laughs> Diane, here's the magician that couldn't make it. <laughs> Cove Haven is a uh, honeymoon resort. Couples. Every time we walked into the cocktail hour, the entertainment director would say, Ooh, our two gay friends are back. <laughs> At least she was half right. <laughs> and what about George? Nobody talks about George. What's up? Imagine if George could really talk. What do you mean by that? probably be doing about eight to ten right now. <laughs> think, think of the clubs that play together. Richard Dixon's White House, Eastside Comedy, Rainy Night Cafe, Boomers, Tickles, Chuckles. Vince has closed more clubs than the IRS. <laughs> I'm surprised the lights are on here. <laughs> I just want to sum it up by saying, and I know you all agree with me, Vince D'Antonio is to comedy what Bill Clinton was to a certain blue dress. Oh. Billy Norton! I know Billy Norton. I know Gary. <laughs> All right, they keep coming. The big stars, but more 
Brian Tobin, come on, give him a hand. <laughs> 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 that was a guy that's gonna be nice to you. Great to see you. Who the hell dressed him though today, Peter? <laughs> I gotta be quick, there is a cavalcade of stars out there, and I have to be quick, because obviously uh, Vince is gonna be oh, a lady show run off to the, <laughs> the Liberace and Lindsay Nelson lookalike contest. So, <laughs> that's sports coat there. <laughs> but, uh, I gotta pee, Forrest. <laughs> and you can turn the SpongeBob hat around, and that'll absorb it up for you. <laughs> George, while you're down there, it is too obvious, there you go. But you got here late, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about that timing shit, huh? <laughs> it's your night, baby. It's your night. It is your night. And really, you've been roasted, and it has been harsh. It has been harsh. I'm going to drive home, and I'm going to say you pedophile and fucking laugh my ass off. <laughs>
or as we like to call it, uh, hey, we had nothing to do on Sunday, let's con Ryerson into letting us use his stage. <laughs> Over at Lovely McGuire's, or what I like to call the only club Rich Walker can get work at now. <laughs> it's nice to be able to see all the guys here. Bond was great, man. He was. Kings? Yeah. No. <laughs> Paul. Paul, can you see me standing behind Brewer Bonds? Yeah. <laughs> but my buddy Vince, I haven't known him. A great deal of time. I remember the first time we uh, did a show together. And we were hanging out. We had a great time. And then after the show, the people at the hospital were very nice as I was getting my stomach pumped for alcohol poisoning. <laughs> a lot of people up here tonight breaking Vince's chops, telling him that he's a hack, he's stock, everything like that. You got to remember, what was it, 150 years ago when he wrote that shit, it was original. <laughs> Back then, there was three big names in comedy. There was Moses, <laughs> this young new racist comic called Abe Lincoln, and Vince. Moses went on to be the greatest. Abe got some kind of political job. We're still around. And Vince is <laughs> still here. Back when McGuire's was an apple orchard. But seriously, but I'm gonna I gotta get out of here because uh, yeah, because people are leaving. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> isn't he great? We're both bad. Oh, I hate when the Special Olympics are in town. <laughs> Vince, you're a great man. I love you very much, and I hope you keep going on forever, Vince. Thanks, Vince Antonio. Tony Landolfi. Yeah, Tony Landolfi. Come on, give me. I can't believe we have this special guest here. Please, I, I can't believe it. Roseanne, come on, a big hand for Roseanne. Let her hear it. Roseanne is here. All right. Come on. Hi, Roseanne. How you doing? Hi, Yeah. Slip me your tongue. Close. If you look real close, you can see the 
the chlorine rings around Vince's mouth. <laughs> yeah, Vince isn't the smartest cookie in the box, you know? He thinks genitalia is an Italian airline. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, so what else? You got a kiss for me, huh? Yeah. Give me a kiss. Of hey! Get away. I don't like splinters. Oh, no, Give me a kiss. Yeah. Yeah, if you think all these years that George has been making you money, you can do something special for him? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Why are you in pinches? Give him a couple of fancy knobs and nice your drawer. Then Vince can stick his hand in both your drawers, you sick bastard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the only way this old man has wood anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to hire Vince to open for me anymore. Because the last time I did and I tried to pay him, he said, hey, instead of the money, can I take pictures of you blowing, George? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vince, do yourself a big favor. Go rent yourself a wood chipper. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this real thick thing for wood. He can't even sit on a wooden chair without getting a heart on. <laughs> All right, well, look at where my career has brought me. Down to doing shit holes like McGuire's. Oh. <laughs> and that sick ass, suck ass place in Connecticut called Knickerbockers, huh? There you go, everybody. Let's give a warm hand again for Vince Dantona. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, give me a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we have two more before our guest of honor comes up here. Yeah, we're we're going to be quick. <laughs> All right, this next guy is uh, one of the relatively new comics, but he's terrific. And, uh, and you're going to meet, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Williamson. Come on, give me a hand. Chris Williamson. How you doing? How's it going? Vincent George. Let's hear it for Vincent George, huh? Come on. My good friend's my comedy booker, Rick Morgan, who helped give me my start in comedy. He's in the back there. He said to me, he said, Chris, I'm, he came up to me, he said, Chris, I'm very impressed. I said, with the roast? He said, no, 30 comics working for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to find, thank uh, John Ryerson and the staff here at McGuire's. Let's hear from McGuire's. Thank you, guys. I'd like to thank John for not charging me a dollar for workman's compensation tonight. Thank you. <laughs> well, maybe I should have paid it because I just had the nachos. I, I don't know. <laughs> but we are here to uh, we are here to uh, roast Vince, and uh, I'm really happy to do it. You know, I, I never realized Vince liked to drink until one night after a couple slowly he offered to sit in my lap. <laughs> he told me a story too, Vince, about the first time he went to the recruiter's office because, as you've heard, he's a marine and. Uh, he told me what the guy said. Vince walked in, the Marine's sitting behind the desk. He looks at Vince, he goes, uh, young man, Cub Scouts are down the hall. <laughs> uh, one time Vince went AWOL, actually. I don't know if you knew that. He, uh, he went AWOL, but uh, nobody realized it, though, because the guys in Splatoon for roll call, they put a little G.I. Joe doll up to stand there. <laughs> nobody knew he was missing. <laughs> But after the Marines, Vince was able to go out and uh, he was able to make his stake in life. He, uh, he moved into his dream house. Actually, it was a Barbie dream house. <laughs> <laughs> but his career has stood this test of time, playing great places, great theaters, like uh, Two Fools Theater, Cafe Rosemaria, the Shirley Mastic Knights of Columbus. <laughs> He's had a career in film. He's been on uh, ABC TV's Funniest People. Uh, you may have also seen him in the Austin Powers movie playing uh, Mini-Me. I wish. It's not a type of... <laughs> but Vince did recently have a bad car accident. We're all happy Vince is okay, right? It was a bad car accident. Yeah, I guess. A couple people give a shit, but yeah, he was okay. Um, and they called Vince's wife, and the first thing she said was, Oh my God, how's George? <laughs> I've got to eat. <laughs> but uh, they actually ran out of uh, wheelchairs at the hospital, but lucky they had a, luckily they had some strollers lying around. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vince. It's okay, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
It is an honor to be surrounded by comic greats tonight, like Rich Walker, Evan Weiss, Steve Lazarus. I was working with Steve Lazarus, Lazarus last night, you may have uh, saw him a, min a minute ago, and he said to me, Jesus Christ, I can't believe it, the headliner stole a joke from me. I said, Steve, that's awful. He goes, what, did he stole my, did he stole a joke? I said, no, that he stole one of your jokes. <laughs> but guys, Vince, I love you. It's been an honor to work with you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good night. Chris Williamson. Chris Williamson, come on, give me a hand. Chris Williamson. Family and an anchor spot. It's terrific this guy came out here all the way from New York City to be here. One of the finest comics around. I really mean this. Tim, how are you? Come on, give me a hand. Tim, how are you? Oh, it is great to be here at the Vince Stantona and George Memorial. Give it up for Vince. Oh, give it up for all the fucking drunk comedians. Comedy rehab here. Real smart. Put Vince's paper boy on last. That's a good thing. <laughs> it is good to be here at McGuire's. You look at McGuire's on Matt Quest. It says it's located in Applebee's asshole. All right. Where <laughs> the fuck are we? No, oh, this is I love McGuire's. John Ryerson. Come on, John Ryerson, the owner here. Cheap fuck. We'll say that right away. Vince had to pay the admission to get in this place. There's a sneak judge through the back. Yeah. <laughs> no, I tell you, no, John's a good guy. He drinks a little bit. Actually, uh, John Ryerson, they thought he had a uh, heart attack the other day. Turns out he swallowed a shot glass. That's always a bitch. <laughs> but I tell you, Peter Bales, good. He teaches, he's a professor at the Stand-Up University. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys saw the sign, Stand-Up University. He teaches the fine art of the comb over. So that's, uh, <laughs> make sure you got that class. <laughs> and the other guy's Rich Walker. Rich Walker, the only funny thing Rich Walker has is his Christmas cards. <laughs> Which is ironic coming from a fucking Jew. That's what we need. His vest. Have you seen Rich Walker's vest? They look like bibs now. How fat is he got? Fucking George could use those. And Steve Lazarus. All right, Steve Lazarus, huh? He's the only feature act that got demoted to MC because he doesn't give out peanuts in his act no more. He's a vendor. All right, we got to explain this. I just like to say, uh, John Trusen cannot make it because he has an appointment to stalk a female open micer. <laughs> at a Girl Scout meeting. <laughs> and Gary Smith and Jimmy Finn got into a big cat fight. Apparently they went to a party wearing the same leather mask. <laughs> so that was unfortunate. They couldn't make it. Oh, uh, Monty. Chris Monty was, he was actually uh, part of the duo Monty and Lund, the greatest comedy duo since High Powered Howard and Pat Man. Yeah. That was an amazing duo right there. That's. Yeah, yeah. All right. I've never seen you so speechless. There you go. All right. We're not talking. All right. <laughs> now, let me tell you about Vince Dantona and George. Look at. Some of the clothes, look at this. This is a spokesman for the dollar store. Look at this fucking outfit. Slightly irregular. You ever see that shit? This is clearance at the thrift store, but that's all right. Now, I tell you, some people think Vince uh, steals jokes. I don't think that's... All right, that's all right, son. Yeah. Get up with a fucking janitor from the wires. That janitor. All right, no, let me tell you about it. Some people say Vince still. I think Vince, let's be honest, I think Vince is the only person ever to steal jokes from fucking Bazooka Joe comics. <laughs> Good jokes. <laughs> you notice his uh, little hair there, that was, that used to be his. That used to be Vince's. They recycle that shit. Get in the back, <laughs> Vince D'Antona, the only guy to work at McGuire's for the money. That's pretty sad. That is sad.
<laughs> it did happen. They were talking about the car accident, but uh, it did shake him up a little bit, so much that he actually just signed up for Peter's class. So that's kind of fucked up, but that's all right. <laughs> I, uh, so I did fuck him up now. Now that uh, now uh, George moves his lips when Vince talks. That's kind of fucked up. He's a little confused. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, but look at that. Three wives for well, one puppet. That's commitment right there. One puppet. <laughs> no, but I tell you, this is... A lot of people don't know how who the fuck I am, and I don't blame you. But uh, actually what happened was uh, George fucked the waitress here, and nine months later I was pregnant. And I was born. You know, so that's how I got here in Bohemia. Uh, I think my stage time is up. <laughs> At least. Yeah, I got the light. <laughs> no, nah, but he, he's a good ventriloquist. Actually, the only thing that doesn't move on Vince is his career, and that's why <laughs> we like him here. So I appreciate Vince. Thanks a lot. serious here for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> the reason we're all here is because this guy is funny and professional and nice and we love him. Good night. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Vince D'Antona and George. Come on. Give him a big hand. Come on. Peter Bales. We've got a host master tonight, a host master. A master of something. How you doing, Peter? Okay. Now, are you saying nasty stuff? No. Uh, see, all these guys here tonight, I know, you know some things we were saying, the drink and all that, you know, it's just things that they're talking about. No, really. It's just. No. Yes. One's on the other time. <laughs> I just want to say, all, all these nice comedians came out here. I know they're all friends. All my family's here and everything. All my friends. And I just, uh... So look, no, uh, you just joined? No, I'm just... I just can't think of anything bad. Can I do Billy Norton? Go ahead. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I just can't think of anything bad to say about anybody. I can think of some shit. <laughs> no, but this. No, but it was nice that all the comedians came out to talk to us tonight. Is that what this was? Yeah. It was an open mic night. No. <laughs> they, were, they were doing shit? Yeah. <laughs> Having more fun at the accident. <laughs> I got a list of some of the people that were here tonight. Yeah, who's, that, who's that last guy? That was Tim Hamiud. You know him. Got termites older than that little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I didn't write. I didn't write stuff for everybody. But you know, I love, love everybody here so much. And Johnny Rizzo was up here. Johnny Rizzo. He came with Roseanne. She was good, wasn't she, Roseanne? Yeah. I did her. No, he didn't. <laughs> It's a good friend. And Johnny Rizzo. Oh, what, what, what are you going to say about Johnny? You can't say anything bad about him. The face that washed a thousand shits. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that bad? <laughs> see, you shouldn't say, I wouldn't see, I wouldn't say that. You didn't. You didn't say it. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's talking about Rich Walker. 
Christine? Where's Christine? Where's she going? <laughs> uh, Christine! The water broke. The water broke? <laughs> <laughs> the water broke? <laughs> well, you know, just because, you know, Christine finally got pregnant. Right? Come on, nice round of applause. Yeah. Did you see Child's Play? <laughs> I just wanted to know who she suspected. No, no. <laughs> no, I was talking to Rich, and he just said, no. He doesn't care, you know, if it's a boy or a girl. As long as it's white. No, no. <laughs> songwriter, he's a great guitar player, and Paul Bond, who's next? <laughs> Steve Lazarus was here? <laughs> hey Steve, roses are red, violets are blue. If you had an act, I'd be opening it for you. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have a lot of stuff here. You ain't got shit, is <laughs> it? You know, I know we have a, a few Italians up here. <laughs> we have Tony Adolfi and, and Joseph Anthony. Sometimes you should put a count track down and have their asses. <laughs> Kumba. <laughs> Okay, I <laughs> Chris Monty. Chris Monty! Yeah. <laughs> he sells insurance? Well, I heard he knows the most about showbiz. But the biggest nose in showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> His dad's here. Only kid and say. I'm just so glad everybody showed up here tonight, because you know, I know we had a lot of people come in here and just big uh, you know. Really, everybody's really stuck in here. <laughs> They're crowded in. It's, this is a big room, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's not big enough for you, George. Thank you, sir. But you know what? Let me tell you something. Hey, we love you, baby. let me tell you something. We love you, baby. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> this room is so big. Come here, you crazy man. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, we had Rick, Mor Rick Morgan's here, and we had... I have a couple of uh, guests come in from Philadelphia. Jimmy and Joy Little from the Comedy Works. We have the Comedy Works in Philadelphia. And I just wanted to, you know, acknowledge them. Yeah, and say, hope you didn't come here looking for talent tonight. See <laughs> 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 my lovely wife, Maureen. Hi, Maureen. My brother Danny. How you doing, Dan? Come on back! And Tommy's back there somewhere. Hey, Tom, how you doing? What's up? <laughs> okay. Now, I had a couple other people here. Let's see. We had, uh... Paul Barnier. Wow. No. <laughs> Paul Barnier. <laughs> <laughs> the dummy. <laughs> No, it's nice that Rick Morgan and John Ryerson shook hands tonight. Yeah. Hey, shut the fuck up, man! <laughs> Who the hell is that guy anyway? <laughs> They're not having mud wrestling later. <laughs> it's like the, the newest thing, or the greatest thing since Martin and Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you know the long, baby. We love you, baby. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say... I want that jacket. 
Listen, hi, this is George from the future. Shut your fucking mouth, you bald stick your truck. Shut your pie hole. Let him finish, all the respect. That's George from the future. <laughs> Oh, George of the future. <laughs> Can you call the apple? <laughs> hey, here's John Ryerson. How you doing, John? Hey. Trying to sell something? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Listen, is Peaches here? So what do you, what did you rush? Okay. <laughs> Where's Peaches? <laughs> okay, I can't see this shit. I'm a puppet. <laughs> If you Pete Michaels was here tonight, come on. Yeah. Pete Michaels was here. Yeah. That was a great, that was a great act. Yeah. I don't know. He, he's doing stand-up now. <laughs> Pete, don't lose the puppet. <laughs> don't try to stand up. You suck. <laughs> Move your lips, asshole. <laughs> Talk. <laughs> Only kidding, no. So you can't say nothing bad. I gotta do it. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I think that, you know, I just want to say, you know, I know there's a lot of people I didn't pick on. Uh, Billy Norton. Shut the fuck up. No, no. <laughs> Ron Tobin. Oh, he said it all. Okay. Looks like Opie. No. <laughs> And Joe Starr, I, I was going to say, you know, it's nice to see Joe Starr here. Good to see him fit in here with his ego. <laughs> okay. Uh, I probably missed some people. Who did I miss? Beth of Plazadelli. Why did you say something? <laughs> Jim Myers, right? Okay, Jim Myers with that. And of course, you know, Rock Rubin. Rock Rubin was here tonight. Who's, you know, you'll see his credit, his name on the credits for the, for the, uh, he's the only, Jesus Christ. We love you, baby. Thank you. Okay. I just want to thank all my friends for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.